Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Praise the Lord. We've been studying out of the book of 2 Samuel, and uh, we are in chapter 1 of 2 Samuel, and we, the word we left off was uh, verse 16. Uh, what had happened was there was an Amalekite who had went across the battlefield and had taken the armband and the, and the, the uh, crown of King Saul, who had been killed on the battlefield, and then he lied about it. And uh, David told him that, that in verse 16 it says, Thy blood be upon thine head, for thy mouth has testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. And uh, in reading that, as I was studying it, I realized that, that your tongue can get you in a lot of trouble. Amen. You know? Amen. So I made this, uh, this, uh, this uh, little uh, word study on uh, Beware the Tongue. And... Uh, Again, I'd like y'all to just choose choose one one of these or more, and uh, let's read them together. Beware of the tongue. We have taming the tongue. We have stay out of trouble. We have useless religion. We have keep your mouth shut. We have the power of life and death. It's not what goes in. It's a sharp razor. Put the fire out. The right time. Hold your peace. Slow to speak. Seasoned with salt, evil things, be acceptable, put it away, take it off, <laughs> cut it off. I will not. The Lord hates, God knows all day long, cursed clothing, and beware the lake. So who's got one of these? Come on. Okay. Who's got it? They're all very interesting. They are. And I know, I know I've seen seen it happen so many times when you say something you wish you hadn't done. Amen. You I know? have songs. You wish you hadn't I... said it that way. Amen. You know? A lot of times, especially between man and wife, the wife will hear something that the husband said, but the husband didn't think he said it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have 109, uh, 17 and 19. Of which book? Oh, <laughs> Psalms. Okay. <laughs> he said he loved to curse others, now you curse him. He never blessed others, and now don't bless him. Cursing is a nature of, to him as his clothing, or the water he drinks, or the rich food he eats. Now may his curses return and cling to him like clothing, May he be tied around him like a belt. Isn't that interesting? Somebody who carries around cursing like clothing. You ever made somebody like that that every time they open their mouth, curses flow out? You know? Uh, I, I'm fortunate, though. I was raised in a family where we they didn't curse a whole lot. And they never said God's name in vain, ever. But, you know, but the, I'm not saying they're the most godly people, but none, none of us are. Uh, but you have to be really careful to guard your tongue. Amen. And you don't need to wear curses like clothing because it's, I mean, it says that the curses will be upon you if you're like that. I mean, just think if every time somebody said God's name in vain and, and, and with using the, the, the damn word, it happened. That's right. What would happen if God did damn everything? Oh, no, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? And, and pardon me for using the language that way, but, but that, that's what I'm getting to. Guard your mouth. And when people say that, you should you should call them down. Yeah. You yeah. should. You should say, hey, I don't want to hear that. That's you know. right. Okay, who's got who's got something else? Um, I think that's Second Samuel 1, 20. Second Samuel 1, 26. Okay. I prayed for you, Jonathan, my brother. You were very dear to me. Your love for me was wonderful. More wonderful than that of a woman. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're looking at the, the, the she's looking at a different one. Well, we're not doing that one right now. We hadn't got there yet. Yeah, we're on the tongue. We hadn't got to the love yet. That's good. Okay. Oh, that's why nobody had it. Okay. Praise the Lord. It's great. 
Yeah, looking at it like, what is he talking about? Yeah. <laughs> okay, beware of the tongue, right? Yeah, we got to beware of the tongue. Uh, okay, give us a minute. Proverbs 18:21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So is the tongue powerful? <clears throat> it's very, very powerful. <clears throat> I mean, just ask anybody in propaganda in the, in, the, in the political circles how powerful your words can be. Yes, sir. There's nobody in the world that knows how to use it any more effective than they do. Oh, I know. I know. And, and that's the thing is, we need to, we need to be as, as, as good as they are when it comes to sharing the Word of God with people. Who's got something else? We've got a lot here. Yeah, i got James 19, 1, 19, and 20. Okay. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, <laughs> slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. All right. Swift to hear, right? James 1.26, anybody that? No. <laughs> Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongue deceive themselves. And their religion is worthless. Wow. Wow. You get religious people that can't keep their tongue from wagging. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. And that's, there was a time in my mm -hmm. life when we would go to prayer meeting and share. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't share. Yeah. You didn't share because the whole world knew it in a whole different form than what <laughs> yeah. you asked for. That's right. I don't like that. Proverbs 17, 27, and 28. Whoever restrains his words has knowledge. Amen. And he who has a cool spirit, a man of understanding, even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. Amen. You know, I, I work at a very high... Uh, place that has a lot of technology, you know, and uh, I have learned a long time ago, if I just keep my mouth shut and stare at people, they think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny about that? Because I remember when I worked at, at Neiman Marcus, I worked in customer service, but, I, you know, the distribution center was also there, and one of the things they'd say is, like, if you walk around very, you know, you walk fast with like a paper in your hand and don't say anything to anybody, they won't question you. <laughs> They'll leave you, you can walk all over the place all, all day long. You just look like you know what you're doing as long as you keep your mouth shut. Exactly. You know, that's a wise stuff. man keeps his mouth shut. Yes. Proverbs 21, 23. Whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. And his Amen. tongue, not just his mouth, his tongue too, right? Yes. I have Psalms 52 too. Thy tongue, devilish mis mischiefs, like a sharp razor, worketh deceitfully. Mm -hmm. James. Oh. I was reading, and this is not on your list, but in 1 James 3. First James. <laughs> or 1 James, me. Anyway, James 1 or 3 and 2. Yeah, that's on there. It's the first one. Is it? Yeah. Well, no, I'm not going. Oh, yeah, it's 2 to 10. Yeah, okay. I have a whole bunch there. For in that which James, things. That hit, hit you on the tongue. What did you say? Read it. For in which things we offer all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ship, which thou, thou they be so great, and they are driven fiercely winds. Yet are they turned about with ever smell, small helm, where whatsoever the govern listeth, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold, 
How great a matter a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. Yes. That is defiled the whole body and the settled on fire, setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Wow. For every kind of beast and of bird and of ship serpents and all thing of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is a unreal evil full of deadly poison. Therewith, bless me, God, even the Father, and therewith, curse me, men, which are made after the similitude of God. But out of the same mouth proceeding blessings and cursings my brethren these things ought not to be amen that's a, that's that's a lot of words there but uh, you know uh, <laughs> since the tongue is like a fire and uh, and you know in a, in a marriage relationship it's really it's really important that you guard your tongue and not bring up the past so much. You know? <laughs> I mean, really, the, the, my, right. our biggest arguments between me and Joyce have been something that yeah. you have no control over. Something yeah. that's already been done, yeah. you can't change it, and you, you, there's no need to even bring it up. That's right. Because you can't change it. That's right. You can only change the future. Amen. But you can first. learn from the past. Yeah. Uh -huh. you, if, if, it was a bad, if it was a bad situation, you should let it go. You don't learn from those things. The Bible teaches us how we should be. And I guess we could use our lives as a pattern to how we should not be. I don't think we should. I think we should use the Bible as, as the guide point. Yes. Sometimes we use the past for excuses of the future. Yes, we do. Yeah. I've seen it in many people. You did it. Why can't I do it? There you go. <laughs> well, I've heard more like, my mother, this is the way I was raised. This yeah. is how I was treated. Yeah, yeah I've heard that one, yeah. I'm that way because of my parents, you know. Exactly. This is a Freudian slip, right? <laughs> yeah, you need to ask the question then, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is a good study for anybody that, that, that wants to... That maybe you have a problem with your mouth sometimes. What? How many people in here have a problem with their mouth sometimes? Okay, <laughs> so this is for everybody, right? This is for everybody. But the last one is beware of the lake. Oh my. You know, all liars. Well, and I have told people, I have told certain people this in my circles many times. All liars will have their place in the lake of fire. So don't lie. There's no need to lie. Even little lies. We, we watch David lie. Little lies to get out of things. And you know what? The outcome is not that good. Sometimes. Sometimes it is good, but what would it have been like if he had not lied? That's the question I have, you know. Uh, well, when you tell a lie, you have to remember who you told it to. Exactly, and, and this guy, this guy in Second Sam, Samuel is dead because of his lies. Amen. All right, so let's continue on with Second Samuel, and we'll go on to something else. Y'all can study those in your free time. Put it in your Bible. Okay. It says here in verse 17, in chapter 1 of 2 Samuel, David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan, his son. So he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jashir, The beauty of Israel is slain upon thine high places, and how are the mighty fallen. And I'm going to stop right there because this is a lamentation, a chant, or a wail uh, that, that David wrote. Basically, it is an ode to Saul and Jonathan. Okay? So this is, this is a song. And you're going to find it is actually written as a song. And the, uh, the first refrain there that they sang was, How are the mighty fallen? 
That's the name of this song, How Are the Mighty Fallen. Now, I wanted to point out something. It says in verse 18 something that I had I was struggling with until I looked up a few things. It says, also he bade them to teach the children of Ju Judah the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. What's the book of Jasher? That was my question. Have you ever heard of the book of Jasher? Sister Norman, have you ever heard of the book of Jasher? I know you haven't. You may have. No, I haven't. Okay. Now, the book of Jasher, or the book of the just man, that's, how, that's what Hebrew means, is an unknown book mentioned in the Bible. The translation of the book the, is the book of the just man's a traditional Greek and Latin translation, while the uh, transliteral form Jasher is found in the King James Bible. There is, a, there is a book of Jasher that you can find, but it was written in 1200. So it's not the book of Jasher. It's a Hebrew book that you can find. And it means the book of the just man. But it is, it is a, a, a rabbinical book. It is not this book they're talking about here. Now, I found out something. It says in the book of Jasher, it said that, it says here, teach the children of Judah the bow. Some writers believe that the bow was the name of a song. And this song was used in a kind of boot camp to teach the men of Judah to use the bow and arrow, a technology of war at the time. Okay, So this book of Jasher was an instruction booklet on how to, use, how to make and use bow and arrow. Wish we had that book today. It would be a very valuable book. You know what I'm saying? But here it is in the Bible, and I like finding the things like this. This is something that has not been found. It'd be nice if an archaeologist found this book, you know. But I, but I, I enjoyed reading and I enjoyed uh, uh, thinking about how you would have an instruction booklet on how to use the bow and arrow and how to make bow and arrow. And I had told you before that bow and arrow, last week I told you, bow and arrow, uh, it is older than written history. You know what I'm saying? The bow has been around before people began to write. So so that's how, how long the bow, bow has been here. And uh, they've had time to perfect that bow. By, by the time that David was around, the bow and arrow was perfected. Okay. Uh, here's the song. How are the mighty found fallen? It says, the beauty, verse 19, the beauty of Israel is slain upon thy high places. How are the mighty fallen? Tell it not in Gath. Publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Least the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. Least the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Ye mountains of Gilboa, yet there be no dew, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you, nor fields of offerings. For there the shields of the mighty is vilely cast away, the shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, from the bow of Jonathan turn not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet, with other delights, who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of battle, O Jonathan? Thou wast slain in thine high places. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How are the mighty fallen and the weapons of war perished? All right. He said, don't tell the story in Gath. Gath is the place of the wine press. Uh, he says, the Philistines have... Don't tell it at Ashkelon, or the weighing place of the Philistines. Uh, and you don't want to make the heathen women rejoice over the death of, a, of our king. He said, speak to the mountains of Gilboa, the heap of ruins is what that means. David, was, David cursed the land. He says, let the land be like Saul, dry and lacking the anointing of God. Losing was a national disgrace. Jonathan's bow, he says, did not turn back from battle. And Saul's sword made us mark on the enemy. He made his mark on the enemy. 
And he says that Saul was pleasant in his days. Uh, Naim uh, means sweet. And then he went on to say that they were swifter than an eagle and stronger than a lion. Now, what are the attributes of an eagle? What does an eagle do? Fly. It flies. Soars. It soars in the heavens. It stays in a place called an airy. A-E-R-I-E. -E. A nest up inside of a, of a cliff. Safe from all harm. You know, and when he comes down on his prey, he swoops down and grabs his prey and brings it back up to his, his nest. So an eagle, an eagle has perfect eyesight. He doesn't have to wear spectacles like me. <laughs> I've never seen an eagle with spectacles. Uh, and then a lion. A lion's the king of the jungle. He's got a roar that roars in front of his enemies, and they fear and they cower in front of him. And of course, we know the Lion of Judah Amen. Yes. is David himself and Christ. David was a type of Christ. It says in verse 26, I am distressed. And uh, the root word is sa'ar, sa which means to cramp. I've got cramps because of this. You ever got cramps because you're so mad at something, you're fearful? But they, these, these are distressing. He's, he's mourning his, his loss. And then he says that he was pleasant, and then he talks about love. Now, I handed out a sheet called, word study called love. And we don't have time to study this this week. But I want you to take it. Now, one thing, those of you who aren't going to be here next week, this particular study can help you because it's got all the words in the Old Testament and the New Testament that are translated love in the King James Version. So you can see that our, our language, English language, is very, very shallow. Because, yes, it is. Because they have about six, seven words here that are, that are translated love. Yes. And uh, so next week we're going to study this. And uh, so where we've left off, we are going to study the, the word study love, and we will be starting uh, chapter 2, lesson 2 on your outline. So God bless you all. Thank you. <laughs> Go back to Dave. Mm -hmm.